Good morning, Leanne. Hi, James. How are you? I'm doing good. Well, happy Holy Week. Yes, it's been a great one here so far. Well, I guess then uh, we should start a Holy Week pilgrimage. Well, let's do it because okay. uh, we're going to follow the churches and, and go in and get to see a little bit. And we're uh, going to give you a sneak peek of everything. First of well, all, okay, let's come over and all, have a look at little Mishu yeah. here. Mishu. Casco Cat Community, we host a YouTube channel, and what we'd like to do is we like to keep people informed about Casco Viejo, but we also like to talk about our mission in caring for our cat community here. We've been doing it for a long time. There's about 20 of us in the community that, that uh, take care of the cats, but we also are very proud of the community that we live in, and... Uh, and this week, this is going to be our, if you're from England, you'll relate to this, this is going to be our Easter so where special. where are we now? So we are walking up to Iglesia La Merced. So let's go this way and we'll kind of tell you a little bit about it. And I'm going to stand over here so you can still talk because I want to be able to get the church in. Okay. And uh, we came out a little bit earlier this morning we had the uh, carrying of the crucifix last night, and it started here. So tell us a little bit about the church then. Well, get, get the, show the, the sidewalk, because these pebbles give the date 1673, because this church was apparently um, one of the churches that was destroyed in the original Panama City, and they took the stones from the church there to rebuild, they brought it over and to rebuild the facade of this church. And what stones were left over is what they used in, and uh, contributed to building the wall of Panama City. So it was- oh, I didn't it, know that. It was part of, they used the stones from the church to build the, the safety wall. So if our audience kind of, if you haven't um, watched us before, we've kind of pieced together on how it is here in Casca Viejo. But Casca Viejo is the second uh, Panama City. The first one was burned down and that is over in Panama Viejo, which is about eight kilometers away from here. And this was our first church that was built. Well, actually this little chapel was the first to be built. Is that incorrect? I'm incorrect on that. The church was the first to be built and uh, there was a wall around Casca Viejo and there was like 68, 69 homes inside of Casca Viejo. Okay, time out, time out. I think, no, the San Jose church was built before. Oh, that's right. Yeah, no, I've got that wrong, didn't yeah, I? So. Okay, so, uh, well, let's just go with this, right? Okay, so, so we do the best that we can do. Okay, so, and the other tidbit, this is one of the only churches that is left with its original wood ceiling. And ah. this one has, is recently being under construction and only just like this week for Holy Week, for Easter week, Semana Santa, that they pulled down all of the scaffolding that was here in front of it. So, what do you think, James? Do you think if anybody donates, anybody who donates from this video today, we give 10% of your donation to this church? Oh, that would be really nice. You mean if they donate to the Casco Cat community? Yes, if they donate to the Casco Cat community and they put in their description or whatever, Easter special? then we will give 10% of your donation to this church to go towards the um, the renovations of it all. Okay. So shall we be Let's quiet? Let's get to it. Shall we be quiet now? Yeah, we'll go through and we'll whisper at this point. Okay. We don't want to be disrespectful. Good job. What we're going to do is let's let's just walk around a little bit. So the, the I guess what we're really doing is we're giving a snapshot of the churches during Holy Week. But I don't want to give too much information because I really like to see tourists come to Casca Viejo and they could finish this tour. Sure, they need to experience it for themselves. Exactly. We actually just came to a wedding here about a month ago. I know. It was absolutely stunning. And then it? unfortunately, we came for a memorial service too. Oh, that's right. Our dear friend. 
So I have to point out these amazing wood beams, these columns that stand this whole structure. And then if I can get you to look up at the ceiling, because like I said, this is one that has its original wood ceiling. Oh yeah, look at and that. I can actually wet, see they're still working over there. Do you see in yes, there at the top? In a wet, humid climate, it's amazing that the ceiling is still intact like it is. Wow, well, I'm not going to go too close to the altar out of respect, so I'm just going to cut across here. Now I have to do my little cross like this. No one can see. You have to curtsy, Leanne. I have to curtsy. Yeah. Wow, look at this. Are we lucky or are we lucky? Remember, James, we saw them lifting up big, big solid blocks of marble. I wonder what they're going to do with these because oh, the these look... the outside, they're going to come in and maybe replace these. I hope not because these are so beautiful. Wow. But we had that big crane one day outside heaving up these huge blocks of solid marble. So they've recently turned this part into like a little museum and there is, rumor has it, that it's believed that one of the paintings, and I have no idea which one, so when you come you'll have to research it yourself, but one of the paintings is supposedly from the original church in Panama Viejo. Oh my God. Well, how special was this this morning, huh? Very. Oh, that was amazing, wasn't it? Now I'm going to pan these fabulous doors. I don't know how they'll come out, but look at look at the scale. The scale of the size. Oh. There. Wow. It's beautiful. Oh, well, look at that. So this is the church in Glazia Merced. Oh. Wasn't that special? It was amazing. It is one of my favorite churches here in, in Casco Viejo. So I touched on this before we actually went in. What do we have here, Leanne? This one, okay, so you see two structures beside the church. The one little chapel on the other side of the tent, yes. which is a mausoleum. Okay. And then this small chapel, which is truly a chapel. And I'm just gonna open the door. Yeah, but we don't want to disturb anyone because I think they may be praying, right? Yeah, so I'm just gonna open. The no, door. we don't need to do that. Okay. Go on then, quickly. Out of respect, we're kind of pull out of that, but yeah. my heavens. But the story I'm told, or that I've been hearing, is that this, this little chapel was built for the, the everyday person who may have been working and they would come, they would come from, they would come from outside of the walled city and they may not be dressed respectful enough to go into the big chapel, the big church, so they use this small chapel to go in and pray. Oh, super cool. And I'm gonna try and get a good shot here without getting run over. The only thing that they haven't completed is the, um, the windows. But yeah, we'll, the, the we'll stained come glass back and windows do the windows at another in. day. But that's absolutely fabulous. It really, really is. And this is the, this leads into KADS. So this, I know you've seen a lot of people of this little street, but this actually is ground zero for Catholicism 
here in Casca Vieja. Yes. And it's the co and it actually I I would say it's the cornerstone of um, of Casca. Yes, because when they have the the religious processions, they all start from this church and end up in the main cathedral and cathedral plaza. Yeah. Okay, Leanne. Where are we now? So this is Iglesia San Jose, which is better known as the Church of the Golden Altar. Okay, let's have a look. Oh, and here we go. This is the reader board for it, isn't it? Yes. So as I mentioned when we went into the last church, if you'd like to walk in, Leanne, and I'll follow you with the camera. We can do is that. Is that uh, we're giving snapshots, and for some of you who watched the... Uh, the episode last week you would know that we just came in and we did we did a walk we did a brisk walk through but this week it's a little bit different buenas gracias man look at this so the rumor has it then so when um the Welsh, and we will talk about the Welsh, Captain Morgan went to the old city and was starting to pillage. Yes, and destroy, because they came in search of supposedly, because they had come from Colombia, so they were thinking Panama had silver and the, the precious metals that Colombia did, but Panama really doesn't. I think as we know from today, they have a lot of copper, because there's a big copper mine here, but they really didn't have the same precious metals that they did. So they were coming looking for that. So what did we do with the old city? We actually burned it down ourselves to prevent Captain Morgan from having it, right? Yes, that's what the folklore, that's what the history tells us, but it actually didn't really work because they spent three weeks, they spent three weeks going through and pillaging everything and taking whatever they, they wanted to. Can I ask you a question? I noticed you took your hat off. Why did you do this? Because out of respect, it said, please take your hat off in the church. So. And that's pretty interesting. That's for men and ladies. And I know when I grew up as a young child going to church on Sundays, ladies always wore had to wear their hats. Yeah, so apparently. And I think when we go to Italy, you do the same thing. You always have to put a hat on. Or so. a covering. I think a your covering. head should be covered. So here it's a little bit different. Yeah, they ask you to take off. They ask us to take off our hats. So. so I did. You know, they've actually lit up the altar this. When we came in last week, it wasn't really lit up like this. But this time they've kind of lit it up. So as you can tell and maybe see a little bit closer up, it is actually wood and it is covered in gold leaf. Wow, look at that, huh? Super, super cool. So would you say that there's a lot of history here on just this altar? There's a lot of history. I know it's here. one of the biggest tourist attractions when people come to Casco. Yes. Because it kind of talks about the history of Panama, doesn't it? Yes, and UNESCO has given it a, a World Heritage Site. Oh, because labeling. of this? No, not just because of the churches. I think just because there's so much history in general. And it is the old second city of Panama. Ah, okay. And each of these churches that we're going to be looking at, they all do have services. Yes. And you have communities of people that come in from outside of Casca Viejo to come to church on the weekends. Yes, and especially during Samanta, Semana Santa, they come from all over the interior of Panama to make this pilgrim, pilgrimage to do all of the, pass all of the seven churches. All right. Shall we go out? Yeah, that was kind of nice, wasn't okay. it? Yes, it was. Well, you know, as we're walking around and we're doing the church, I guess we should maybe talk a little bit about the Casco Cat community and why, and why we actually do these tourism videos. And we're not, we're not specialized in uh, producing videos for tourism, but we feel that it's kind of a means for our Casco Cat community and the awareness, isn't it? That's right. I mean, we're not actually professional in creating videos for the cats either. We're just two people kind of having fun, figuring it out. So do you want to talk to do, about the Casco Cat community, let do, people know what it is? To trying to do good things. If you shut up, I will. <laughs> okay. <laughs> trying to Buenos do- Buenos dias, senor. Buenos. Oh, yeah. Try and be in it too. Trying to do good things to help the cats. 
speaking of cats, there's one of them. And um, Sophie from Damselfly is just sharing with us that after months, and Damselfly is is a tour group, renting bicycles and setting up tours of of Panama, like and monkey boat, uh, canal, anything you really want to see in in Panama she can set you up with tours. So the guy there with the camera, he's actually stood outside Demselfly. And Demselfly is located right here on Central Avenue in Casco Viejo. And I'm gonna give a little plug because she does, she does help us in the Casco Cat community and she goes above yes. and beyond yes, like the other volunteers. She's part of our volunteer group. And as I was saying, she's been working with Screaming Sandy, getting her comfortable. And uh, Sandy is now starting to go into go into her little office there and have lunch and get some water and oh really yes yeah, she's been a uh, more comfortable laying in the in the floor and taking a nap inside the office which is quite a deal for a feral street cat because most of the times they are so scared to be contained anywhere that they they're not really comfortable in all spaces so so let me ask you a question how could people help if they really wanted to help and this is this is if you're considering coming to Casca Viejo on, as a tourist, or if you're in the Panama City and you're watching this video, or you'd like to, to help us, we have several different channels that you can donate. And would you like to talk about that, Leah? Well, you can click the donate button. Where would you click the donate button? On our website. Which is? www.cascocatcommunity.org, O-R-G. Good job. Or, or if you're a local, you can. You can go to Blaine's at Super Gourmet, and for fifteen dollars, hola, señor. For fifteen dollars, a fifteen dollar donation would buy a bag of cat food. So you can help if you live here, or if you're a tourist thinking of coming to to Panama, they can go to our website and they can make a donation at our at our website. And actually, if you have any questions. Leanne and I, we first made our purchase here 15 years ago. And let me tell you, I would not be walking around with this video camera 15 years ago. Well, what are you talking about, James? When we came here the first time, you had a honking <coughs> camera with a big lens on it. Well, that's true. And I didn't know better. But on day two, I wouldn't. Well, maybe I would have done. Yeah. But, but no, it was not safe to walk around here. You took your life in your hands, actually, if you tried to do this 15 years ago. Yes. So it was, it I'm going to back up from different. you, Leanne, so you don't fill that bloody screen all the time. <laughs> so uh, I know you like the camera, Leanne, but uh, not let, really. let's keep it in perspective. Not really. So I'm where not, are I'm, we now? So this is the Iglesia San Francisco. And the story about this one is it's a one, it's beautiful church. And it was originally built uh, in the 16 somethings, but it has been destroyed and rebuilt. And the last renovation, I believe, was 1995 or 1997. And it's kept its original foundation, but everything else has been rebuilt over and over. But inside, I believe there. Okay. Oh, I'll that, get that. That fan feels very Oh, my nice. heavens. Now this is what I would consider a little bit modern. Yes, well considering it was actually, the last renovation was in 1995, 1990. When? 1995 or 97. Ooh, we can relate to that then, yes. you were actually alive when they did that. Well, the last renovation, yes. Oh yeah, look at this, look at the um, mosaic. Yes. Where would you say that, well you specialize in tile land, where would you say that mosaic comes from? Well, a lot of times mosaics would come from Italy, and considering Italy played a large uh, part in in the in Panama and the churches here, I'm just guessing, just guessing. That's it could all right. Be, That's generally your 24/7 approach. <laughs> yes, it is. Um, maybe Italy. Okay. Or it's actually just tiny bits of pieces of glass. It could be cut here. Ah, okay. Brought it over and then cut it here. All right, and then, oh, I guess this is, this is the altar, because there's an altar there, there's another altar here. And I'm not gonna ask you to talk about the altars. And the reason being is that people can, when they come to Casca Viejo, they're gonna do a little bit of adventure and search themselves to, to, to learn the history. 
Yes. I mean, if we do everything here today. The one thing that we don't do very well here is when we move furniture, we just drag it across the floors. We, we, generally, we generally don't put wheels under something. And I don't know how else to put that, but I, I will say one day we may learn how to do that. So this looks like a beautiful onyx behind this one. Then look at the altar, the real yes. altar. My heavens. Sacred Heart, Sacred, Go ahead. Heart, Sacred Heart of Jesus altar, and man, look at that. According again to what has been mentioned, is I'm not sure it's still that way now, but originally this altar would have been was made out of over 400 pieces of hand painted. Uh, tropical cedar. I think it's been replaced in the last five years with this beautiful glass mosaic that it's that's here now. I have a hard time believing that is hand-painted cedar. But it is beautiful. It is still very beautiful, whatever it's made out of. Look so. at this actually, this is like a gallery. Well, I mean, the, all the, churches are kind of like a gallery. I know, but look at the artwork behind you. I know. My heavens, you, you do feel like you're in a gallery, and it's so different to the other churches that we've already been into. Yeah, very much more a modern modern feel to this chapel. I mean, even the, the, the stones that make up the walls, they're probably plaster. This board to look like limestone. You can actually see that in... Wow, is that onyx? Yes, onyx, just like the other one over there where I said, that's onyx. Mm. Oh, that's pretty impressive, that is. Yes, it's beautiful. Oh, and I've not to get too technical on the stone, really but you can see cool. the beautiful book match, how the, they book match the, the pieces of the stone to actually use the natural veining of it to kind of highlight and give this beautiful aura effect for the figure. This piece actually looks and appears like it was original piece from the original colonial church, uh, painted in wood from the 18th century. So this was probably from the original church. Remember, a lot of it was burned and it's had several fires and several renovations. Um, well, things fall off the buildings a lot here, so I'd imagine it <laughs> fell on the sidewalk at one time or another. And it may have. I say that in tongue in cheek, but. I have to say that because it happens here. Yeah, you have, to, you have to be careful walking under the balconies here because little chunks and pieces can... Well, the buildings, they've been here for hundreds of years. Yeah, and it's not like they were put old. up last week. They're you know? just old, so what do you expect? Well, here's another altar, a beautiful stained glass. Wow. These are very similar, though, these ones here. Another beautiful, more modern painting. And you said these altars were... From the uh, from the Kunas, I, originally I believe the altars were made by the indigenous people. Ah, okay. I'm not sure that because these are marble. and that may have a reflection on maybe the size and the presence of the altars because they're not massive, right? I mean they're You're, they're you, they're scaled accordingly. You you can say that this as an option sure yeah i mean i could have described it a little bit different 20 30 years ago but i'm trying to do my best in how i present that because people may say well they look really small altars and then we're going to finish out here with this one and once again how appropriate this is for holy week this is actually for tomorrow sunday the ascension day and this is where Mary is holding, well, no, actually, this is when he comes off of the cross, I believe. And then he goes to the cave and then Mary will go back on Sunday and then he ascends into heaven. That this is, is what I learned in Catholic school. Now, if I'm wrong, please put it in the comments and tell and, me that and, I have no and, problems with that and whatsoever. Fix, fix it for us. Yeah, and just to be clear, when I went to Catholic school in England for the first eight years of my schooling, everything we learned and communicated was in Latin. 
and and that there's something to be said about that can i remember any of it no <laughs> but uh yeah even the catechism before i took my uh, confirmation no my first communion it was in latin and you had to learn the entire book in latin before you could take communion and you did that yeah actually i did i didn't That's i didn't take it well here's an interesting tip actually i wasn't able to take it with my class because i couldn't get the catechism down but I did take my first communion on the 25th of May, 1967. I'll always remember that that's because it was really, you. really difficult to learn. That's, that's a so special let's day get for a you. little swoop of here before we leave. And again, you can see the modern glass that has been surrounding the entry, which is quite um, unusual. This is actually, you know, that's kind of interesting you say that because this is what you would see in Europe. When we travel in Europe, you see this modern glass coming into play in a lot of the, the history and uh, sites. Well, you're most probably going to recognize some of the things that we're walking by now. We actually did a video on this recently, but the church that we just left is very close to our next church. And Leanne, where is, what is the church that we're going to now? Uh, San Felipe Neri. And this is where our uh, friend and sponsor, Blaine and Yasmina, were married. And they remember our, our friends from Super Gourmet, who is where you can go to buy a bag of cat food for $15. Uh, okay. So this is where they got married. So well, let's, let's see if we can go in here quickly. We are a very small community here and we do reflect on each other when we go to the different locations. So to put it in perspective, this church is like 50 meters away from our last church. Now this is a treat. So this altar is supposedly built in the colonial style, a colonial style altar, and it has 14 stations of the cross in this church. And this would have really played in yesterday on Good Friday because you actually come and sit and go through the stages of the cross. Yes, that is true. And it also is known for one of its the largest nativity scenes, which maybe we can peek through that. Oh, on. if we get the opportunity to do that, that would be amazing. Yeah, so let's just... So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pan in on those these quickly. I'm not going to overdo it. But generally when you see the stages, usually stages of the cross, are usually plaques around the church. So you can also see the, the floor. Oh yeah, look at that. I actually don't know too much about this church, but I would say if you're on vacation, you would allocate at least an hour to come in here and learn about it. You could turn around because it's also well known for its wooden double level choir. So if you turn around, you can see that that's one of the other very unusual and... Ah, okay. So what is that? Is, that, is there an organ up there? No, but I, where the choir, you would have two levels of choir instead of like sometimes they're there, there's oh, steps. Oh, you it's know, two. I had heard from someone in the community that you actually auditioned for the choir and you're going to become part of the choir. <laughs> Is that true? Um, well, you tell me, because you always make fun of me when I am singing, saying I can't sing. So I highly doubt that is a reality. But thank you very much for pointing well, that out. Well, you know, Leanne, we're going to go from doing... Well, you're, you're an actress now, right? So we're, we're no. going to get you to be a singer next. And then when we do the one on the National Theatre, which we'll do the National <laughs> Theatre, you can be a dancer on stage. That I would enjoy. And then we'll get you in the Disney Club. That, you can find that old picture, because there's an old picture of me when oh, we that's first, right. when very I met first you. Came. No, 
not bad. When we first came to Panama, Silly Goose Listen. So oh, when we first right. came, we got to tour the National Theater. And back for a dollar, you could go in and roam anywhere around it. No one stopped you from doing anything. So A little bit like what we're doing now. Yeah, kind of. Except yeah. for I got to go up on the stage, and there's a picture somewhere of back in from And the, we'll get that out when we do the theater. Yeah, you, you'll have to find that. All right, so let me... I'm going to ask these guys if we can actually get in to see the Chapel of the Presidency because it's uh, normally not open and we can't get in it, but supposedly during Holy Week... Well, let's see we if they see know. Maybe see. they'll know, maybe they won't. Buenas. Buenas. Is it possible to see the chapel? Chapel... Uh, the Chapel Pequeña? Why don't you show them it the, written the on church? the paper and then he might be able to... This. This. Ah, okay. Uh -huh. No. No? Uh, it's closed? Yeah, uh, closed. Cerrado? Sí, solamente era hasta ayer. Oh, yesterday. Ah, uh, oh, we missed it. Okay, yesterday was the only day. <laughs> we evening. missed it of yesterday. Course, of course. Okay, well, okay. at least it was open. Yeah. Okay, gracias. Okay. Next year. Muchas gracias, señor. Here we go. One, two, three. So, again, here we are on the other side of the presidential palace which is on this building and it overlooks the water and the very new modern city of Panama. Yeah that's an amazing so, shot isn't it? Colonial modern. Modern and that actually is one of the tallest buildings I think that's over 80 stories high it doesn't look like it's 80 stories high but it's, it's 80 stories high. I've actually flown the, the drone over. I know you look said down. it was a, a very scary moment. Oh look. Oh that's in your so, do you want to go check out the big cathedral now? Yeah, we got to go to check out the big cathedral. Uh, oh, here we go. So, do I have the filter on the end of that? Do I have the filter on it? I think so. Okay, good. I think good, so. Good. I'm not sure. That's well, a technical. Well, we need filter to, technical. To, to smooth out the, uh, to, the to facial parts. To so smooth out my wrinkles? No, you look absolutely fabulous. Oh, thank you. You're paid to say that. All right, and then oh. here we have is... Um, Cathedral Plaza. Cathedral Plaza. And I think if uh, the audience has watched our other videos, they're going to, I'm going to highlight a corner where we actually stop and you feed Luke and gang. Yes. And that's over there in the corner. But Where the flying person is. I don't know if you can tell that's a flying person uh, yeah. on the building. It's so getting a little bit So let me just pan aged. this a little bit and then I am going to spin and then we're going to focus on the cathedral. So this is like ground zero where it all ends for Semana Santa or Holy Week because all of the processions that we've seen, again, start at ours and La Merced and then they all parade through here. And by the way, those things are very heavy that they carry. I believe I was told they're called ondas and that is the different floats with the different sculptures oh, okay. and, and figurines on them. But they're all hand carried by several men and they literally all these and I wish I knew how much they weigh but I don't they weigh a lot and they actually have to sit them down and take a break along the way well, because I... they go through and they come up here and they go up the ramp and into they everything ends here in the cathedral and I and, and, and it's just kind of joking but it's not joking I think if this was done in any other country they'd have that on wheels yeah I know but that that takes, takes away the away suffering the, the pain and suffering the exactly. suffering so well let's go into the cathedral then Leanne all right so one thing I found very interesting that I didn't know until today is, let's count them, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There are seven limestone steps Well, if you could kind of this. walk up those steps so you don't get run over. Well, talk about run over. You're standing in the street now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven steps that lead up to it that symbolize the seven deadly sins. Come on, James, let's go in. All right, cool. Oh my heavens. Okay, so once again, I need to take my hat off to come in here, so that's... I know, I, I find that very, very confusing. And today is actually super special because you can see them preparing the Andas for tomorrow's parade. And these are all left over from the previous ones. So you can see that this was from oh, the Oh, there's the ones that they brought in on the street? Yes, yes. 
but they're, it looks like they're preparing. Check that out. Real Madrid was around in those days, too. He's in tribute to Easter. He's wearing his Real Madrid t-shirt. Okay. Oh, my heavens. Yes. So they, it looks like they're preparing for tomorrow. She's putting all the flowers on. Oh, okay. So tomorrow, then does it start from here tomorrow? or is it? No, it still starts at La Merced. It still, it still starts at La Merced and ends up back here. I think the parade route or the route is a little bit different, but um, it ends up here. And I'm so sure they're actually going to take these up to Merced yes, tomorrow morning? Yes, they will do it tomorrow morning because every day I've seen them getting ready for the processions and they're coming from this direction, heading to La Merced. But um, let's take a look at the All right. The well, I'm actually going to focus a little bit now on the, on the church. I hope you don't mind. I'm Why sure the mind? audience won't mind that we're not looking at you while we're walking through the cathedral. It's not about me, babe. It is not about me. I know. It's about the cats. But it's not about Today the cats. it's about the churches. It's Easter week in Casca Viejo, and yeah. that's what's so fabulous about this. There's a little bit of a story behind this, because when we first came to Panama, this was in ruins. Yes. In fact, it was in such... It wasn't ruins as per se. It was, disrepair. Let's say it was disrepair. in disrepair. It was so in disrepair that they did one of the most amazing fashion shows here in Casca Viejo. Remember when they did it outside oh, they did and they built the thrust yes. and against the back doors? Yes, yes, yes. And then they started, I don't know how many years ago, maybe eight, nine years ago, they started the remodeling. Yes, which the floor has all been replaced. It used to be the more the, the clay tiles, the encaustic tiles, and they replaced it with this beautiful black and white marble. And the, you know the beautiful thing about the remodeling, at the time when they did the remodeling, they didn't know that the Pope was going to be coming here in 2019 and actually present Mass here. Oh, I thought they did it because they knew the Pope was no, coming. No, they didn't. They were oh. able to get the, uh, you know the youth program every two years it goes to a different country? Yeah, the JMJ, but I don't really know what that yeah. juvenile... President Barella was able to attend an event and he was able, believe it or not, he did an amazing job. He romanced the organization and the Vatican to bring that program to Panama. It was like several hundred thousand teenagers. Yes. And um, he they was did here. their pilgrimage. I know. And we were here for five. He was here for five days in Panama, which is quite impressive. Yeah. And uh, he actually did the, the mass here. And he did do the mass. And we didn't talk about this at the church at San Francisco. He did one there? Or he, yes, he did. He did And he did there. that with... He did that with all the ministers and the government officials. Oh, because it's right next to yeah. the, this one of the one, government buildings. This one they did uh, for, you know, for, for the parishioners in, the, in yes. the whole of the country. Yes. And it was a serious lockdown. In fact, they had to bus people in from a couple of miles away just to come into Casco. Yes, we had to get special um, permits because we lived here. And so that we had to show our IDs and this permit to, to get even into the, the neighborhood. So yeah. it, was, it was very... You, and I think security. I'm going to try and look for that video clip from when he went by where you the building were, where you we're. You were standing what, ten feet? I think maybe less than that. So I'm going to I'm going to look for that. So remind me when I start doing the editing. Okay. So let's get back to this because there's some features inside the cathedral here. And if for some of the audience, if you're getting a little bit frustrated and you'd like to see more, I'd suggest you get on a plane and come to Panama. It's worth. And then, it. and then come to Cascavia. Yeah, it's very worth it for oh. sure. I just heard the guy over there say Jesus Christ, and I thought he was taking his name in vain, but he was talking about Jesus Christ. That's well, James, only you. I know, it's crazy. Only you. So there was a couple of gifts that were left behind. The, it, the one you're talking about, and you would, you may know more what it's called, but... Yeah, let's go to it. Yeah, could, it's did over you see here. it? The, is it the umbrella? Yeah. Ah, oh, they've moved it back. Mm. Okay. So from what, you, what you've told me is that this piece is only placed in churches or cathedrals where the Pope has given Mass? That's exactly is that right. Is true? And I learned that from Marius Donnelly, okay. who's in, who, who is very much up on this. And he actually mentioned that to me when I showed him the, after oh. the Pope had been here. I had showed him that. 
So and that that is a very, very, very special piece. It looks very modern and new, but it actually has a big significance. Well, it's like if you're in the hotel industry, you get your star rating. Yes. This is like the three star <laughs> rate, a five star rating for a hotel, which given we, by the Pope. Given by the Pope, but we don't have a five star hotel here yet in no, Panama, we don't. and I'm hoping that one day we may. And I believe if anyone's got a chance of doing it, it'll be the Sofitel legend. And and then I guess if you're a restaurant person, it will be this, the equivalent of getting a three star for your restaurant, the Pope leaving the umbrella. But if we go this way, Leanne, we can check because he also left something else. Come here, I think I found the other thing. Come this way. Oh, yes. And you know, I, I'm kind of surprised it's, they're not highlighted. Do you think they pushed them back because they, they're usually more at the front and maybe they put them back because of the holidays and all the tourists? Maybe. And they're just making room for everything else to be the feature instead of... Or these. if there is a clergy from a competing cathedral in a different city might come down and bag them and take them back to his cathedral. Again, only you, James. I know. Well, only you have a little you. bit of humor, right? I mean, I know Goodness there's not gracious. much you can have fun with anymore, is there? But you're in a church. I told you, I actually, to the age of 12, I was learning mass in Latin, so I, I feel like I, I'm qualified so to earned, make those comments. you've earned the right to make jokes. Yeah, a little okay. joke. Okay, yeah. all right, there you go. Yeah. Anyway, well, okay, so Tell that is it. Tell us about the bell, James. It's what? The bell. The bell. Tell us about it. I really don't know much about it. All I'd learned is the bell gets left and the umbrella gets left after the mass uh, when, when the Pope is here. I still so. think it's special to see the the Ondas from the processions because they are definitely not here. Oh, look at the stained glass. Yes. Not sure how that come out in the light that we have. But it's absolutely magnificent, isn't it? And I'm not going to spoil it for people that, um, and to provide too much information. One, because I don't want to get it wrong. And two, I do really want to encourage people to come so. to Panama. This, this, since we've been talking about the Pope, this may be something that people want to see because this chair was used by Pope Francis in the consecration ceremony of the high altar of the Cathedral Basilica Santa Maria Le Antigua on January 26, 2019. I got the year right. Yes, you did. I got the year right. So this is the, 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 the chair that he had sat in? Yes. Oh, okay. That's so pretty cool. It's had the Pope's bottom On right that. here in this church which is by the way known as the sacred heart cathedral ah okay so shall we uh and i was talking to a friend of mine um last year and because there was a couple of churches that had a wedding scheduled in them and one of them was the san francisco church and they had a problem in the church and one lucky person was able to have their wedding here last year. Wow, that would have been... Oh, a, can you imagine? Well, let's hope that wedding and marriage is one that defeats all the odds and is blessed especially and it lasts forever and ever. Okay, well, we'll, we'll, we'll try and do a follow-up on that just for you, yeah, Leanne. That would be nice. Thank you, James. All right, and I think this is what they call... Oh, no, hold on a minute. Wait. I want to get a... Yes, feast our eyes on this. So when I was saying they're heavy and it takes men to carry all these things. All right. about, so anyway, it takes several male species. Okay, so know, why, you, why can we not have ladies do it? I think it's just men that carry this. I oh. don't think that I have, there's women who are in the parades and in the processions, but I believe all of them carrying it so far, to my knowledge, have been men. And it takes a lot of them to lift this. Well, I bet you if you... So, are you still in awe? I'm still in awe. It's I fabulous, am. isn't it? The other night, one after the first procession, I got to come in and pull flowers off of off of one of the the ondas, and I gave it to my mom. It oh, was that a was white really rose, nice. a white rose, and some eucalyptus and some white lilies. All right. So, so it's a goodbye. It's a goodbye for me. It's a goodbye for me. And thank you so much for visiting, and we are delighted that we are able to host this video. Once again, it's a big thank you to the Casco Cat community. All right, let's have a look. Oh, look, there's lots of people here. Oh, look oh, at wow. this. Oh, my heavens. Wow. And 
to think that they worked on this most probably over the last year. Yeah. Well, we saw them yesterday as they were prepping. Oh, these are the ones that were in the... Uh, in the cathedral yesterday. This one was the one they were putting all the flowers on. Looks like what's happening now. 